We're now continuing the journey to the bottom as it's meant to be. Let's go follow the food as they pass the tubular fecal processor, the large intestine or colon. Large intestine. The colon is a 1.5 meters or around 6 foot long muscular tube that surrounds the small intestine. It's made up of five sections. The cecum, the ascending colon or right colon, the transverse colon or across colon, the descending colon or left colon, or the sigmoid colon, whose name comes from its S-shape or sigma in Greek. Finally, it connects to the rectum. Peristalsis motion starts this final process by bringing the leftover waste, stalled to be, from the small intestine to the colon. Although it seems that all the nutritious portions of food have been absorbed in the small intestine, the large intestine still holds a large role for our body. The chyme is first introduced to the colon in a form of liquid from which the water contents will be absorbed by the colon wall. Water moves through the wall because of the osmotic gradient created in the process of electrolytes absorption that occurs at the same time. As water is absorbed, the fecal matter solidifies and, due to increased bile concentration, becomes brownish in color. The colon, which has lower bile acid concentration, is the place where we rely heavily on a successful form of symbiosis. In return for letting the gut microbiota make home to our colon and feast on our food remains, they support us with many beneficial products and excellent services. They produce vitamins, help regulate many metabolism processes, enhance our immune defense, prevent gut diseases, and may even affect our brain's psychological conditions. We have animated some of them in more detail in our other videos. Go check our channel! After finishing its journey in the colon, which lasts around 36 hours, the solid stool is formed. The stool is then stored in the sigmoid colon until the mass movement empties it into the rectum once in 12 to 24 hours. But it's not always the case. Disorders inside the colon, such as the imbalance of gut microbiota, may lead to our stool becoming watery or may cause diarrhea, which is a condition when the colon excretes the stool more than three times per 24 hours. Rectum the rectum, which is Latin for straight, is a 20 cm or 8 inch long chamber with around 4 cm diameter that connects the sigmoid colon to the anal canal. It is tasked to receive and store the stool from the colon. As it receives more stool, the rectal wall expands and activates its stretch receptor, which in turn contracts the external sphincter to prevent any unwanted leaks or droppings. There are many names. It also relaxes the internal anal sphincter and sends a message to the brain to urge you to defecate. If the brain rejects the message, the rectum will contract and result in reverse peristalsis, forcing the stool to move back to the colon to reduce the load pressure and the stretch on the rectum. However, this will cause the stool to undergo water reabsorption again, which makes it drier and may lead to constipation. When you're finally ready to let go, the abdominal muscle contracts to increase the inside pressure of your body. The puborectalis muscle and external anal sphincter relax, and the stool, pushed by the rectum, will flow to the anal canal and continue outside. During the process of passing the stool, squatting is the most desirable position, as it gives you the straighter anorectal canal, lessens the pressure required to pass the stool, and makes the overall process faster. And that's the end of our journey through the alimentary canal. Thank you for being patient and excited during our long trip. Eat mindfully, drink enough water, and exercise to keep this wonderful system working. Subscribe for more videos in the future.